Welcome to FIRST Canada's FTC's training series. Today, we will go over how to use the joystick and trigger on the gamepad to control your robot. Unlike the buttons from the previous lesson, the joystick and trigger are not just on or off. Instead, they range from 0 to 1 and can be any number in between, depending on how far they are moved. By the end of this lesson, you will be able to control the speed of your robot by pressing the try trigger to move forward and the left one to reverse. You will also be able to turn your robot by using the left joystick on your gamepad. The arm will also move up and down with the movement on the right joystick. The first thing we will do is control the forward and reverse motion of the robot using the left and right trigger. The right trigger will move the robot forward and the left reverse. You will start with our code from the previous lesson and modify it for this new movement. We start by removing the speed variable from the top, where it is declared, and then in the init function. We no longer need this, as the speed will be defined by how far we push the triggers. Pressing the trigger halfway will produce half speed, and all the way will produce full speed. Now that we have removed our static definition of speed, we will also need to remove our old code in loop. We remove the motor button boolean and also remove the if-else statement for setting the speed to make room for our new method of driving the robot. Now we need to create a new double in our loop called speed. This variable will be set to the position of our right trigger subtracted by the position of our left trigger. We can visualize this calculation by imagining some scenarios. If our right trigger was pressed all the way down and that was it, we would expect our robot to move forward at full speed. Same thing with the left trigger, but in reverse. If both were pressed, then they should cancel out and the robot would not move. Because the trigger values range from 0 to 1, just like the possible speeds, this makes it very easy. You subtract the left trigger from the right trigger because it is the opposite of the right trigger, reverse. Now that we have our value for speed, we just need to set the power to the motors. We just add two new lines setting the power of both the left and right motor to speed. Our robot can now drive forward and backwards when we press the triggers, but we will need to be able to turn our robot if we want to do any more advanced maneuvering. Like most intuitive controls, we will use the joystick to do this. By moving the x-axis of the joystick, also known as left to right, the robot will either turn left or right. We need to get this by creating a new double called turn in our loop. We will set it to the left stick x-axis on the gamepad. This returns a number ranging from negative 1 to positive 1, depending on if it is pushed left or right. If it is in the center, then it will return 0. If we now got to the set power functions, we just have to add turn to our left motor and subtract it from our right. By doing this, the wheels on our robot will spin in opposite directions, causing it to rapidly spin. When we run the code now, we can drive our robot forwards and backwards with the trigger, and turn the robot while moving or while stationary by moving the left joystick, left or right. Now, we also want to control the arm on our robot. Like last lesson, we will create a new DC motor arm and then initiate it in the init function using hardware map.get and setting the name as arm motor. We want to control it if it goes up or down using the Y axis on our right joystick. When we push up, the arm will move up and it will go down when we push down. We will create a new variable similar to speed that is double arm speed and set it to right stick Y. Then we just need to set the power of arm to arm speed and we are done. Today, we built on the concepts learned in the last lesson to create an even more flexible operator drive, allowing us to control both the speed and direction of our robot, as well as move the arm. Being able to quickly move and turn your robot is important, but so is being able to move slowly and carefully. By having this variable control, we have the flexibility to do both.